What's up guys? My name's Alex and today I'm going to do a little build video for you. I bought the uh, Win 3 by X-Hover. This thing is super, super small. Um, my all-in-one stack box is actually bigger than the frame itself. Um, another comparison is my cell phone. <laughs> my cell phone is actually bigger than this frame. So it's quite small. It's still going to rip. Um, I am going to put the Hyperlite 1407 3600 kV motors on it. I have the Runcam Micro, which I got from the Quad Box. And then I have this awesome Emacs Magnum all-in-one stack. It comes with absolutely everything. It's got 30 amp ESCs, it's got your flight controller, it's got your um, video transmitter, which is 25 to 200 milliwatts, and it also comes with a receiver. I run a Tyrannus, so this one came with the XM Plus. Uh, everything should go together really fast and really nicely, so it'll probably be the fastest build I've ever done. Um, you don't need many tools for it either. You just need, I got some wire, uh, some strippers, wire cutters, and then two millimeter and 1.5. And that should actually be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking everything out and get this build going. To start off, I'm gonna go ahead and take this top plate off, which I put on just so we can see what it looks like. And then I am going to take out everything in the flight controller stack and start with the ESCs and the motors. I am going to wire up the motors, put them, uh, Put them where they need to go, cut the wires to length, and make sure it uh, make sure it all goes together nicely. Okay, so when you open up your this Emacs all-in-one stack, you get your XT60, you get your XM Plus, all the hardware that it needs. Pull it out. You get your power and ground leads for your XT60. You get a whip antenna, which is definitely what I'm gonna use. But you also get, in case you're putting this in a five five inch build or something, you get your SMA connector, which is super awesome. You can do it either way. Put that back because I'm not using it. And then here is the all-in-one stack. Nice and small. Everything just fits in beautifully. Set that aside. All right, what's cool about this Emacs is we actually are gonna need to solder the XT60 all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Make sure the positive goes to the positive and the negative goes to the negative. And then it comes with the different colored heat shrinks that we already need, so that's nice. This one right here. So, all right, okay. So I soldered the XT60, got that all ready to go. Now, I just need to tin all the ESC pads and the power and ground for the flight controller, or I guess technically the ESCs, the all-in-one ESCs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. That's done. 
I'm going to go ahead solder the XT60 on. Now, I need to make sure that the positive and the negative go into the right spot. Okay, so I kind of took a couple steps ahead. I got everything, you know, ESCs are ready. I put the motors onto the frame. I actually uh, braided them, braided the wires together, because I think that looks super clean when done properly. Um, now, all I have to do, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this flight controller onto this, or the ESCs onto the standoffs, and then I am gonna cut the wires to length, and I will put them exactly where they need to go. I uh, taped each end to tell which one was right, left, and middle. I guess technically I didn't need to do that because you can go into BL Heli and switch motor directions. But I did it anyway, so we'll see if I get it right. Cool, go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got all the motor wires soldered to the ESCs, so now, all I need to do, I actually have the uh, standoffs are actually loose a little bit so that this will fit nicely. So all I need to do is put this on, get the next set of standoffs out, and then put the flight controller on. So we'll do that. We're actually more than halfway done with this build. A -A 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 production. Okay, what's super cool is this little pins that line up in here. Now that I got the standoffs on. All you do is just fit it in. Boom, just like that. Flight controller done. <laughs> so, what I think I'm gonna do next is I am going to get out this Uncams Micro. And I am gonna solder the wires up right where they need to go. So, cut them to length, solder them in. You just need to these three pins that you need to solder in. So, I'm going to unwind this. Cut one of the, cut, uh, stick one of these into the camera. Cut this wire short, because that, that's a long wire. We do not want that much slack. So, it's gonna sit, you know, about right here. Of course, it'll be, you know, a certain degree. So, we only need, that's probably pushing it on length, but there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And then all we have to have left is we'll solder this in, plug that in, take out the XM Plus, solder that onto these three, uh, three pins as well. We're done. Well, I mean, obviously, put, it, put the rest of the frame back together, but that's it. So, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and finish up these last little things. Okay, now that I have everything soldered up, I decided to go from the bottom up to the top when I soldered the camera cables. Soldered that on, 
Now we just need to put the whip antenna on and it just goes right here. And I think the way I was picturing it in my head is I'm gonna have it here, route it around, and then zip tie it right here. So it sticks out a little bit, but not too far. We should still get good signal. So, and that just pops in right here. Actually, I think I'm gonna go this way. It just pops in nice and tight. And I believe I'm gonna find some hot glue, a little bit of hot glue and uh, put it over the top of this. So there's no way it's gonna come out during flight or a crash or anything like that. So that, and then I am going to route these. I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna route them out, but I think either I'm gonna have them come down and out, that's kind of, kind of a lot, or have them come here, have a little zip tie right here, and then heat shrink out. So actually I, I'm probably gonna wrap it once or twice around this stand up, because these are, these are a little long. You know, I don't want them way out and I don't want them to get cut off by the propellers. So definitely going down is the best option. I guess actually on the frame, they have a couple little holes where if I wanted to, you can uh, poke it out through and up. But every time I have antennas going up in a crash or something, they always wind up hitting the propellers and getting chopped off. So I'm gonna route them down and underneath. So whenever they crash or anything, the air from the propellers will actually push it down. So I'm gonna do that real quick and it's pretty much, pretty much the rest of the build. So, perfect. And I almost forgot. This sticker says remove after washing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, wash it real fast and then remove it. <laughs> Just kidding. That's for our buzzer. Cool. All right, so I went ahead and put everything together. I did my heat shrink, put the receiver wires out through the through the back here, the way I like it. Uh, and then I put the whip antenna, wound it around, zip tied it to the top plate. I uh, have a scale here to see exactly how much it weighs with these racecraft props. And it's 154 grams. That's actually not too bad. So, the next step is obviously take off the propellers, take them off, connect it to the uh, computer, do BL Heli and Betaflight, get everything set, and then time to go flying.